Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Today, we're going to break down an essential concept in macroeconomics, interest rates. You've probably heard about interest rates in the news, seen them discussed in financial reports, or encountered them when taking out a loan or opening a savings account. But what do they really mean? How are they calculated? And why are they so important? Let's dive right in. Section 1. What are interest rates? At its core, an interest rate is the cost of borrowing money or the reward for saving it. But it's not just a simple number, there are actually different types of interest rates that tell us different things about our economy. Number 1. Nominal interest rate, this is the interest rate you see quoted everywhere, the basic percentage rate for a loan or savings account. For example, if you take out a $10,000 car loan at 6% annual interest, the nominal interest rate is 6%. If you keep $5,000 in a savings account with a 2% annual interest rate, that's also a nominal interest rate. Let's break this down, on that $10,000 car loan, you'll pay $600 in interest over a year. On the savings account, you'll earn $100 in interest annually. These simple calculations use the nominal interest rate, which doesn't account for inflation. Number 2. Real interest rate, this is where things get interesting. The real interest rate takes into account something crucial, inflation. It's the nominal interest rate adjusted for changes in purchasing power. Here's a concrete example, let's say you have a savings account with a 5% nominal interest rate. Sounds great, right? But if inflation is running at 4% during that same year, your real return is actually only 1%. This means while you're earning 5% in dollars, those dollars are worth 4% less in purchasing power. Section 2. Types of Interest Rates Economists and financial experts look at different types of interest rates. Number 1. Mortgage rates, this is the interest rate on home loans. For example, in October 1981, 30-year fixed mortgage rates reached a historic high of approximately 18.63%. This means if someone borrowed $300,000 at that time, they would have had to pay around $4,700 per month, with the vast majority going to interest in the early years of the loan. Number 2. Federal funds rate, this is the interest rate at which banks lend to each other overnight. In the early 1980s, to combat inflation, the Federal Reserve raised the federal funds rate to a historic high of around 20%. When this happened, banks correspondingly increased their lending rates, credit card interest rates even exceeded 20%, making borrowing significantly more expensive. Number 3. Treasury rates, this is the interest rate on government bonds, considered essentially risk-free investments. A 10-year treasury bond might offer around 4.5%, which is considered a benchmark for low-risk investments. Investors use these rates to compare potential returns on riskier investments. Number 4. Consumer loan rates, these include credit card rates, which often range from 20% to 30% annually, personal loans, typically priced between 10% and 20% depending on credit score, auto loans, around 6% to 10% for borrowers with good credit, and student loans with federal loans around 5% to 7% and private loans reaching up to 13% to 14%. Section 3. The Fisher Equation. To really understand interest rates, we need to look at the Fisher Equation. It shows that the nominal interest rate equals the real interest rate plus expected inflation rate. Let's use a real-world example. In 1980, the United States experienced extreme economic conditions with nominal interest rates around 15% and inflation also extremely high at around 13%, which meant the real interest rate was only about 2%. Compare this to 2023, where nominal interest rates are around 5%, inflation is around 3% to 4%, and the real interest rate is closer to 1% to 2%. This equation explains why countries with high inflation, like Colombia, have much higher nominal interest rates compared to countries with low inflation, like Switzerland. Section 4. Real-world implications. Why do interest rates matter so much? Let's break it down. Number 1. Borrowing decisions. Interest rates directly influence borrowing decisions, as seen in the housing market. For instance, during 2020 to 2021, Historically low mortgage rates below 3% spurred a housing boom, while higher rates exceeding 6% in 2022 to 2023 cooled the market significantly. The impact is tangible, even a 1% change in interest rates on a $300,000 mortgage translates to a difference of over $200 in monthly payments. Number 2. Savings and Investments Interest rates significantly influence savings and investment decisions, shaping how individuals and institutions allocate resources. 
higher interest rates make savings accounts more appealing, offering greater returns on deposits. For instance, in 2023, some high-yield savings accounts provided returns of 4% to 5%, while certificates of deposit CDs, offered even higher rates for those willing to commit funds for longer periods. Number 3. Economic Policy Interest rates are a powerful tool in economic policy, enabling central banks to influence inflation and economic growth. By lowering rates, central banks make borrowing cheaper, stimulating economic activity and growth. Conversely, raising rates makes borrowing more expensive, helping to cool down an overheating economy and control inflation. Number 4. Global comparisons, interest rates vary widely across countries, reflecting unique economic conditions, inflation levels, and policy objectives. For example, in early 2023, Switzerland maintained an interest rate around 1% despite 3% inflation, while Colombia's interest rate exceeded 12% to address 13% inflation. These stark differences illustrate how central banks tailor policies to their specific economic challenges and expectations. Section 5. Summary. Interest rates are more than just percentages, they're a window into economic expectations, financial health, and the purchasing power of money. They impact everything from your personal loan to global economic policy. So the next time you hear about interest rates, you'll understand there's a lot more going on than just a simple number. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights on economics and business knowledge. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.